have one more award to talk about, um, the Environmental Professional of the Year for 2022. So some of our previous winners are David Simmons, Amandi Zeranati, Jerome Badley, David Stubbs, Dan Redding. You can go onto our website and read about all of their wonderful stories and the, the amazing work that they all do. Um, but now we're going to talk about this year. So we have um, three finalists to tell you about. So first of all, uh, Stephanie McGibbon, CM, Director at Arup and registered via IEMA. Stephanie joined, uh, jointly leads Arup Environmental Arm in London and works tirelessly to ensure sustainable development. Among her many achievements since joining Arup in 2000 are leading the London Impact Assessment Team and diversifying their work to include health and equalities as key elements of social sustainability. Committing Arup to the Diverse Sustainability Initiative recognising the environmental profession's poor record on diversity and the action needs to be taken to achieve change and leading Arab to achieve and maintaining a quality mark in environmental impact assessment. She has shown dedication to making a difference beyond her role at Arab, taking up positions, including visiting lecturer to MSc students at the University of London and as a trustee of the Environmental Law Foundation. Throughout her career, she has shown a dedication to the uploading of professional standards, a chartered environmentalist since 2008. She is also a fellow of IEMA, uh, a member of both the Royal Town Planning Institute and the Royal Holloway School of Life Sciences and the Environment Agency Board. Uh, next, we have Professor Russell Thomas, CM, Technical Director at WSP and registered via the Institution of Environmental Sciences, or IES. At WSP, Russell was in charge of research and development within the ground and water team. His work and application of his knowledge has a clear impact in driving understanding, good practice and innovation, particularly in the field of contaminated land. He's been at the forefront of the development of sequential reactive barrier groundwater treatment systems and is a member of the Network for Industrially Coordinated Sustainable Land Management in Europe uh, Innovation, Innovation Working Group and has authored a number of influential reports and publications. With his position of visiting professor in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at the University of Strathclyde, Russell manages research projects and collaborations between the university and WSP, as well as project supervision, lecturing and presenting at conferences. As well as being a chartered environmentalist, Russell holds several other recognitions which demonstrate his expertise and commitment to CPD, including being a fellow of the Institution of Gas Engineers and Managers and a chartered fellow of the Royal Society of Biology. And again, last but no means least, Becky Toll, CM, Managing Director at Crowbury Consulting Limited, registered via IEMA. Becky's achievements reflect her clear knowledge and leadership, excellent communication skills, and an infectious passion for protecting the environment. She has over 20 years experience as an environmental professional. Setting up and leading her own business, the award-winning Crowbury Consulting and Engineering um, and Energy since 2006. In this time, she has supported swathes of UK and EU-based businesses to become more sustainable by implementing ISO environmental management standards, delivering, delivering innovative training courses, and giving back by coaching and mentoring early career professionals. A career highlight was achieved in 2021 as Becky was appointed in partnership with Arup as lead sustainability consultant of both G7 and COP26, with her work duly recognized as the events were awarded the ISO um, 202121 standard. So, um, as I said with the judges, a really, really difficult uh, decision with this category as well. Uh, you really, all of you really, really challenged the judging panel this year, but we have to have a winner. The judging panel noted the winner's clear knowledge and leadership, excellent communication skills and infectious passion for protecting the environment. In setting up and leading their own business, they have supported businesses across Europe to become more sustainable by implementing ISO environmental management systems, deliver, delivering training courses and giving back to a profession that has given her so much by coaching and mentoring early career professionals. Judges notes that they have gone truly above and beyond to protect the environment and a worthy winner of the 2022 Environmental Professional of the Year Award. So I'm delighted to announce that this year's winner 
is Becky Toll, Managing Director at Crowberry Consulting Limited. Congratulations, Becky. That's crazy. <laughs> I just thought I was here to make up the numbers. Um, thank you so much. That's absolutely such an honour. Um, and could, I'm literally got tears in my eyes. I was not expecting that. Um, thank you to the judges. Thank you to all the finalists as well. Um, it's a real pleasure. It's a real honour. And we all work tirelessly day in, day out uh, to protect the environment. And I know that everyone in this sector is genuinely flat out right now uh working so hard <laughs> my team's clapping in the background so i think they're gonna come over C- come on over guys uh ge- genuinely um i wasn't wasn't expecting that but thank you for, thank you so it is genuinely a real honor thank you Dougal. thank you emma it's it's <clears> really great well um <laughs> there, there, there's there's no need to thank us um the, your, your, oh. your competitors do put us through some some pain. It was, um, it, it, it was a, a, as always, a hard decision-making process. So you should remember that when you reflect and you have a time to yourself that um, yeah. you, 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 you were up against some, some strong competition oh. and you totally deserved to win. You absolutely nailed it. Oh, so, my sister's welcome. just said thank you on the chat. Thanks, Amy. <laughs> oh, that's really um, sweet. So... Okay, I'll try and I'll try and get some a sensible Q and A going a little bit here, which might not be that easy. You do <laughs> you 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 do join an, an illustrious group, and there will be illustrious people after you. But it does a little bit like Paul before you. I always I mean, you know, what's in your interest today, this week that you know you just said how hard you're working, but just give us a little flavour about what that work looks like to to do some. Oh good stuff. gosh. Gosh, I'm, I'm not allowed to name names, but we're, the whole team <laughs> don't, the don't whole <laughs> team is working flat out at the moment on a very large sports event that's going to be televised over the summer uh, on sustainability, sustainability management plans for that. Brilliant. Um, Brilliant. We're doing a lot on carbon management, past 2060, carbon footprinting for lots of different clients um, based up and down the country because everyone's got to get to net zero. Um what else are we do? Gosh, we're doing a lot of legal registers, a lot of compliance stuff uh, for clients who are keen to not break the law, frankly, um, and <laughs> stay stay within the bounds of compliance. Um, well, look, let me let me let yeah. me interrupt you because it was an unfair question, but I, you did very well in answering. It. Just <laughs> we we may have a minute if I'm not turned off or told off uh, to, <laughs> for people to put questions to you in the Q and A. So please. Guys, yeah. there, do, put, do put questions in and then it's not my fault that I'm answering them. But the thing <laughs> is, let me ask a bit about I really like the two examples you gave there because it's it's, it's there was the I, I must do the minimum. There's the compliance side. And then there's yeah. I'd like to actually stretch yeah. myself, you know, in terms of those clients coming into you, do you get a sense that there are more clients wanting to do more than than they are asked to do and that it is part of their, their baseline values these days? Yeah, absolutely. If you go back 20 years when we were talking about issues like biodiversity, um, you know, circular economy, waste management, social impact, I might as well have been talking Russian. Now I go into businesses and talk about these issues and they get it and they actually understand um, that these are super important, not just to investors, but to their staff, uh, to the local community. So mm. now I'm not talking Russian. In fact, we're on the same page and yeah. they just need that help, um, Dougal. So it's very much you know the laggards if you like and the blockers and the barriers who I've you know smashed out the park for the last 20 years frankly they're getting less and less and less Mm -hmm. and now we're seeing a lot more engagement and it is driven I do believe through the ESG the social responsible investment obviously the millennial generation as well I don't know if my son's watching today but you know he's heard me banging on about environmental management for the last 22 years so um, he, he might be uh, listening to this right now mm-hmm. but yeah we've noticed a massive change and obviously Good. COP26 leverage like no before when we go into businesses now they get it they understand you know 1.5 degrees is absolutely critical um, and they also understand that the legislation is, is driving this but they simply understand they need to do it because it's the right thing to do. So, you know. Really interesting point you make about COP26. We were fortunate enough as an organisation to be invited to have observer status. And um, I'm assuming, Emma, we probably wouldn't have been invited to do that in another country, potentially. But anyway, we we did. And it's made a, it made a huge difference. I mean, the society is a global um, you know, award of professional status for environmentalists, but it it it, it, it made a difference. So it's slightly sad that it had to happen, but we've really got to make the most of it. I mean, yeah. so that's really interesting. And and so so doing 
big things. It links to a question, um, Sandra Norva, thanks for your question. What one thing do you wish big events would commit to? Well, um, <laughs> you just mentioned a big event. You, you're dealing with that, you're not mentioning any names, but if you had to pick the one thing that makes the biggest difference, what, what might that be? Um, I've got to say ISO 2012 one, and thanks Emma for struggling with the, uh, the, 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 <laughs> the talk there. So International Standard 2012 one is sustainable events which covers the three pillars of sustainability, social, environmental, and economic. Um, it's genuinely a fantastic sustainability standard. And like we said, we worked with the government, HMG and our to achieve that for G7 and COP26. It's so embracing. Uh, it's such a wonderful management system to embrace everything within the events sector. Um, and we, we want more people to get on board with it. Please listen to our podcast, Sustainability Street, about that as well. Football stadiums, Dale, they can go for it as well if you're interested. Um, but it's genuine. It's, it's really a fantastic uh, management system to support anyone that's running a small event, large event, music event, theatre event, stadiums, you know, on the pitch, off the pitch. Every, every type of meetings, conference and industry that's out there that runs events can go for sustainability. Um, it takes time. Uh, typically between six six to 12 months to implement it but it can be a game changer um, and it can be the difference between someone choosing to come to your event or not um, someone choosing to come and speak at your event or not um, someone being a participant in your event or not because it addresses so many issues Dougal from diversity and inclusion to the to the vegan options on the menu through to the transport options how to get to that venue so that would be my one my one plea is that if there's any event managers on here uh and thanks sandra for the question so look at <laughs> ISO like, my one. hands just coming up to so sustainability <coughs> street was that did you say that was a what was sustainability street that you said you urged people uh, to go my, my podcast which uh is just only a year old called sustainability street please check it out yeah. all right that'd be thank very you. kind of everybody and thank thank you thank you thank you not, not, not at all. I mean, um, thank, uh, Phil's come on and we'll be wrapping things up soon. So off. Massive. No, that's me, not you. Massive congratulations again. Um, well oh, done. Well it's done, epic. Pete. And well thanks done. to Phil for nudging me because he kept sending me emails saying, I think you should apply for this. So I really appreciate that, Phil. Um, and, and, and I really do want to congratulate the other finalists. You know, I mean, gosh, when you were reading out Stephanie and Russell's portfolio there i was like my god yeah you know, i'm just, just gonna a, walk away now and no, no, the cool. computer off <laughs> so just to just just to clarify something we we all nudge quite a lot of people and phil's not on the judging panel just <laughs> in case uh, that was not clear um thanks phil that's all right becky it's okay you see, you've got the award now we can't take it away it doesn't matter what you say um but look the 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 connections there between you and what dale's trying to build just over the river here in my hometown i'm sure you're aware of that development if you're not i mean I think even if Dale likes, we should just all go and camp on his boat till he talks to us about that road one. trip. Yeah, road yeah. trip <laughs> feels like a road trip. I just want to thank before I sign off. Thanks everybody, but I want to um, hope wish Will well and thanks Emma for so ably and Phil in particular standing in to do some different bits. We had a bit of a jig around, so thanks every everybody and particularly Emma who's um, did so brilliantly there. <laughs> <laughs>